Jenny and Ben were about to get married. They wanted to book a hotel for their wedding ceremony in the party, so they went to a wedding planner to look at some options. She told them only three hotels were available for the day they wanted and showed them the pictures. Which one should they choose? Take a closer look at the third floor windows of the first hotel. In the last window on the right, there's a creepy shadow of a monster that appears and disappears. Five stars or not, no one would like to get married in a haunted place unless they're an Adams family member. In the third hotel, only has two stars. It probably doesn't have the facilities to host a wedding, so the best choice is the second hotel. Great choice, the wedding planner said, and you're in luck because they actually have a great discount offer. If you can answer this riddle correctly, you won't have to pay for the ballroom rental. Here it is. Those who have it, do not say it. Those who take it, do not know it. Those who know it, do not want it. What is it? Do you know the answer? It's fake money. The next day, Ben and Jenny went to the hotel to pick the best ballroom for their party. The hotel manager took them to three different rooms where they could host everything, from the ceremony itself to the dinner and after party. Which one should they pick? Do you see a little mouse hole in the corner of the first ballroom? The couple wouldn't want such uninvited guests at their party. As for the second ballroom, the chandelier looks like it might fall down any minute. Not the safest option, so they should pick the third ballroom. It was time for Ben and Jenny to pick the wedding menu. Since they were not paying for the venue, they wanted to spare no expense in serving food that the guests would never forget. That's why they called three different Michelin star chefs. Each of them prepared a different dish and presented them for a tasting. Which chef, and therefore, which dish should they go for? Even though the dish the second chef made looks perfectly fine, do you see a rat's tail hanging from his chef's hat? There must be some ratatouille situation going on there. So that's a pass. The third dish looks like spaghetti, right? Well, look again. Those are actually very thin snakes. Exotic flavors might not be the best option, so they better go with the classical burger that the first chef made. Before they made their wedding vows, Jenny had to say yes to a dress. So, she went to a Qatar store to check their wedding gown collection. She explained to the designer the style of the dress she wanted for her ceremony. The designer said he had just the perfect gown for her and would bring it to her if she answered his riddle correctly. He asked, if a gown takes an hour to dry, how many hours will it take six dresses to dry? It'll still take one hour because they'll all dry at the same time. Ben had one last item to buy on his wedding shopping list, and it was what fastens two people yet touches only one. Can you figure out what it is? It's a wedding ring, of course! Ben headed to a jewelry store to get something blue for his bride. The store owner showed him three different wedding rings with blue gemstones. Which one should he buy? The second ring has an engraving inside, so it must have belonged to someone else before. The gemstone on the third ring has a tiny crack in it. That can only mean it's made of glass or even plastic, so Ben should buy the first ring with a sapphire. Next, Ben and Jenny were going to send out invitations. One print shop offered them three different versions of invitations. Which one should they choose?
Do you remember the name of the hotel they booked? It was Sunrise Lodge, but the first invitation says Sunset Lodge, so this one won't do. And on the third invitation, their names are printed as Benny and Jen. That's not our couple, so they should choose the second invitation. Before the wedding, three of their friends paid them a visit. One of them brought a painting as a wedding gift, but all three claimed that they were the artist who had created it. Two of them must be lying. Can you figure out who the actual artist is? Take a look at the signature on the painting. It says, Denise. Now look at the third friend's necklace. It has the letter D. So she must be Denise, the artist who painted the painting. It was finally the day of the wedding, and Ben and Jenny's guests started to arrive. However, the hotel security spotted three suspicious-looking people who could be uninvited. Take a look at these three guys. Can you tell which one is not supposed to be at the wedding? Do you see the hotel wristbands that say Ben and Jenny that the second and the third guys are wearing? That can only mean they are actually invited. So it's the first guy who's crushing the wedding. Sorry, dude, no free drinks for you. After the vows were exchanged, it was time to party. As Ben and Jenny were dancing, someone spilled their drink on Jenny's dress, but no one saw who it was. Jenny spotted three people who could have done it. Take a look at them. Can you tell who ruined her dress? The first guy has spots on his shirt that resemble stains from the spilled drink, but they are actually part of the pattern, so it can't be him. The third lady looks clean, but the hem of the second lady's skirt looks dirty, so it must be her who did it. After the ceremony ended, Ben and Jenny wanted to take a photo to capture the moment forever. But take a look at it, there's something strange about it. Can you spot what it is? Can you see a woman hiding behind the trees, watching them? She is wearing a witch hat, but it's a wedding ceremony and not a costume party. Creepy. Right before leaving, Jenny suddenly vanished. Then the witch suddenly appeared in front of Ben and said, You may only kiss the bride if you figure out with whom you really tied the knot. Ha <laughs> ha! Then two Jennies appeared in front of Ben. Can you tell which one is his real wife? Remember the wedding photo? The Jenny on the left is the real one because her tattoo is on the same side as in the photo. Now that Ben and Jenny's wedding was over, phew, it was time for them to pick a honeymoon destination. They went to a travel agency to book a tour. The travel agent offered them three different holiday destinations, Ibiza, Cannes, and the Caribbeans. Which one should they go to? Have you noticed the weather forecast on TV in the office? It states that the weather in Ibiza is going to be windy in the upcoming days, and in Cannes, it's going to be rainy, so they should pick the Caribbeans and enjoy the sun. The travel agent said she could upgrade their plane tickets to business class for free. It would be her wedding gift to them. But they had to crack this riddle. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? It's a stamp. Dustin is a widowed man living alone in his house. One day, the doorbell rang. Dustin went up to open his door, and right there, there she was, his uh -oh. wife. How's it possible? I hope you kept your eyes wide open for this one. Look, there's a photo of Dustin and his wife on the wall. His wife has a birthmark on her cheek. The woman that just appeared doesn't have it, so it must be Dustin's wife's twin sister.
Dylan was grounded, and he wasn't allowed to meet even his girlfriend for a week. One evening, when Dylan's mom returned home from work, she found Dylan in his room and asked him if he'd met anyone that day. Dylan said that he'd been at home, studying all day. His mom didn't believe him. Why? Look, there's a lipstick stain on his neck. I'm pretty sure his girlfriend came over for a short visit. Another grounded teenager, Eslin, wasn't allowed to see any of her friends for two weeks after failing her history test. One night, her mother had a night shift and only returned home next afternoon. She came to check on her daughter, and she knew immediately that Eslin had a friend over for a sleepover. How did she figure it out? Examine Eslin's room carefully. Two plates, two cups, two forks. She wasn't the only one eating dinner in her room last night, and she wasn't smart enough to clean up after. Smells like two more weeks to me. Miss Virginia Dell is a rich young lady who had a beautiful and expensive jewelry collection behind a glass in her dressing room. One morning, she found that someone broke the glass and stole her jewelry. Miss Dell's cleaning lady claimed that she had cleaned the room at around 5 a.m. and the jewelry was still there. Virginia's best friend, who was staying in her house that week, said that she had never even walked in the dressing room. Virginia's cousin, who was also staying with her for the holiday, said that she'd walked in the dressing room in the morning but hadn't paid any attention to the jewelry and for sure hadn't stolen anything. Who is the liar? It's the cleaning lady. Seems like right after she broke the glass and stole the jewelry, she wiped off the pieces of glass while cleaning as well because there's no shattered glass on the floor. Okay, here's another task for you to test your observation skills. I'll show you two people and some items. Your task is to guess which person the item belongs to. Let's start off easy. What about this stethoscope? Well, it should definitely belong to this doctor on the right. Two more people. Any guesses who the owner of this bracelet is? The bracelet has a name engraved on it, Sophia. This girl on the left has a name tag with the same name, so it must be her bracelet. Next up, this lipstick. There are two girls who are possible owners, but what's your best guess? Who does it belong to? It must be this girl. Both of them are wearing lipstick but this girl has the exact same shade as the lipstick itself. Earring and two girls again to choose from. Any guesses? It must be this girl. Her ears are pierced and the other girls aren't. The next item is the hair dryer. Who do you think it belongs to? It must be this girl's dryer. She has long hair, and the other guy is bald. Okay, this one is more fun. The next one we have to place is this cute little cat. Who do you think is its owner? See that this girl's legs are a bit scratched? They give her away completely. It's her cat. One last item for you to place. This time it's a photograph of the owner in her teenage years with her parents. Who do you think it belongs to? The teen in the photo is a redhead with green eyes. There's just one redhead girl with green eyes, and here she is. It must be her photo. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She came across a witch's house and asked her to take her home. 
five doors appeared. <laughs> only one of them will take you home, and you only have one chance. The right door is black. It's not next to the leftmost or the rightmost door. It's not the door in the middle either. Which door should Esme choose? There are just three black doors, and it's one of them. It's not the door next to the leftmost or the rightmost one, so the fourth door is eliminated. It's not the middle door, so it's out too. Esme should walk out the door on the left. Nico woke up in a dark dungeon without remembering what happened. She looked around and saw a metal door. Unfortunately, it was locked, and it required not just one password, but four. Eiko had only one attempt to make it right. Gladly, next to the door, there was a sign with four words, apple, bread, chair, and dress. Which word belongs here? Pay attention to the shapes of each password. Some letters are bigger than others, and each word should fit right in. So it should be bread on the top left, apple on the top right, dress on the bottom left, and chair on the bottom right. In a factory, a worker and a half make a chair and a half in one hour and a half. How many chairs does one worker make in one working day, which is six hours? If one and a half workers make one and a half chairs in one and a half hours, it means that one worker makes one chair in the same time, which is one and a half hours. So in a six hour working day, one worker makes four chairs. It was a lazy day, but as soon as it started raining, a city's police officer got a call. Mr. Jones said that someone had just bumped into his car and drove away. The officer arrived. They found one person nearby fixing his car's tire. Mr. Jones said that it was the gentleman who had bumped into his car. The gentleman said that it couldn't be true, since he had been trying to fix his car for over an hour now and was there the whole time. Who is lying? It's the guy fixing his car. The rain just recently started. If he'd been fixing his car the whole time, the ground underneath his car would be dry. But it's wet, which means his car broke down just recently, probably when he was driving away after the accident. A crew of pirates arrived at a deserted island in the Caribbeans at night. In the early morning, the captain went ashore to find his secret stash with all the treasures hidden in it. But when he reached it, the treasures weren't there. Someone from his crew had gone ashore earlier and stolen all of it. There were three suspects, Bill, first mate, Gil, Bosun, and Will, Cook. All of them denied stealing anything, but the captain knew who was lying. Who? There are footprints on the shore from earlier that don't belong to the captain. One is a footprint, but the other one is a hole from a stick. The robber must be Gil, the bosun, because he is the only one with a wooden leg. Let's start with training your eyes a bit. Can you find an odd one out here? Yes, that's the one! Another one for you. Look carefully, and you only have several seconds to find the imposter. That's the one! Correct! Now the game is getting a bit harder, but I know you've got it. What do you say? Here it is. Did you find it? Okay, last one of these, the hardest one. Do you see the odd one out this time? Great job! For several days, a large werewolf has been scaring the residents here. You know that the werewolf has a wife, and she's the only person who can calm the monster down and help him return to his human form. You have found three girls, 
Each of them might be the werewolf's wife you're looking for. You ask his wife to approach him, but none of the girls admits she's the one you need, so you have to make your own choice. Do you see some wool on the girl's clothes? It's the wolf's fur, which means she's the wife. She walks up to the monster, hugs it, and the werewolf turns into a human. You're hungry. You drop by a pizzeria. The owner of the restaurant says that someone has taken all his weekly earnings from the safe. The thief wore gloves and left no fingerprints. The video cameras were turned off. You know this pizzeria has had several similar incidents over the past year. Every time, the insurance company paid the owner the entire amount that had been stolen. You're sure the owner took his own money to use the insurance again. Take a look at the office and prove that the owner is guilty. Look at the air vent. Behind the grated hatch, you can see the bundles of the stolen money you've been looking for. Suddenly, someone shoved Stacy into the water. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife. She had recently lost it, and Luke found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife? The third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. When Stacy gave the necklace to its rightful owner, Neptune snapped his fingers. His guards brought Luke. Neptune said, I'll let you go home safely, but you have to choose the right door. There were demons behind the first door. They were ready to eat anyone who dared to come in. There was lava all over the floor of the room behind the second door. And finally, there was a laser beam that could cut through anything it touched behind the third door. Which door should Stacy and Luke choose? The third one. They can crawl under the beam without touching it. You were in a hurry and forgot to lock the apartment door while leaving. Someone got in and locked the door from the inside, and you had to use the key to open it. You see a human silhouette standing in the shadows and realize that you know this person. Who is it? It's the woman who asked you to help her brother. She was wearing a red bracelet. The silhouette has the same accessory. I came here to thank you in person. The door was open, but you weren't at home, the woman says. A mysterious biologist invites you to his home for dinner. He takes you down to the basement and puts three plates of weird items on the table. One has wild mushrooms with white gills. The second is filled with castor beans. The third has some fish brains. Which one is safe to eat? The plate of fish brains is the only dish that isn't poisonous. Someone got into Matthew's house during a severe rainstorm and took a lot of expensive stuff. The man called the police. They came over and started to interview the neighbors. Nicole said she lived alone and worked from home. She was inside the whole day. Jerry explained he was a chef in an Italian restaurant. He came back from work only half an hour ago. Sophia told the police she hadn't left home because she was ill. Who was the intruder? It was Nicole. She claimed that she'd been inside the entire day, but there was a wet umbrella in the corner. Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m., Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now, they have two options. To take a high-speed train for $100 to go to the right airport, or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option. Look at the clock on the wall. It's 9.55 a.m. The boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take a high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. 
She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see? This woman over there is a zombie. Wow! How did she get through security? When it was time to finally board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate. But it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. Once, a bank was robbed. The police suspected that one of the bank's security guards had helped the criminals. Detective Justin had to question three of them. The first security guard told him he had heard some shouting and rushed there, but by the time he arrived, the criminals had already been gone. The second security guard explained he had been drinking a cup of coffee at that moment and hadn't even heard anything. And the third guard said he had run after the thieves, but he had to lace his boots. Without a second thought, he crouched near an emergency exit. At that very moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came back, the criminals had been gone. Justin immediately understood which guard was guilty. Who was it? It was the third guard. All emergency doors open outwards for safety reasons. Mary is a mermaid. She lives under the sea with her mother, Marina. Mary is 19 years old and Marina is twice her age. How old would Mary be when Marina is 99? Eighty, because Mary is 19 years younger than Marina. Mary is hanging out at her favorite spot in the ocean. Both of the following facts are true. If all the goldfish sit on all the seashells, one fish per shell, one goldfish will stay without a shell. And if every two goldfish decide to share a seashell, one shell will be left without a goldfish. Can you count the correct number of seashells and goldfish? There are four goldfish and three seashells. Mary has a crush on Carl. He's a human. Can you find him among these three guys? The first guy has a mermaid tattoo on his arm, but it doesn't prove anything. The second guy is wearing a seashell necklace, but maybe he just loves jewelry. But the third guy is definitely Carl. His face and name are printed on this diving coach poster. Mary goes to a sea witch and asks her to turn her into a human. The witch says, Okay, but first I gotta check if you deserve my gift. Solve my riddle. When you have ten, you have ten. When you have three, you have three. And when you have one, you have none. What is it that you have? Can you help Mary out? The correct answer is choice. Mary gets her legs and goes on a date with Carl. They're having dinner in a restaurant on the beach. But can you guess who should pay for this scooter? Mary. Only her footprints lead to the scooter. Therefore, she arrived at this vehicle and Carl walked from the other side. Carl and Mary keep on walking on the shore and see these four guys playing in the sand. Suddenly, Carl freaks out and runs away. Why? This guy is a ghost. He doesn't have a shadow. Carl invites Mary to a birthday party. He introduces her to his best friends, Bob, Elle, Otto, and Hannah. Can you guess what's so special about them? They all have palindrome names. 
The next day, Mary goes to a job interview. She arrives at an office building with a metal door. It's locked, but there's a note next to the combination lock. It only has four words, starfish, pearl, fire, and turtle. Can you help Mary crack this code? All things in this list can be found underwater, except for the fire. So the password is fire. At the job interview, the HR manager shows Mary four identical glasses with water and different objects inside them. He asks her to find a glass which contains the most water. Can you help her out? It seems like the water level is even in all the glasses, but what happens if we remove the objects? The glass that contains the smallest object will have the most water. So Mary should choose the second glass. Mary gets a job as a waitress in a restaurant. On her first day, one client runs away without paying the check. The manager says, no worries, I know him. He has four sisters and he's probably hiding in one of their houses. The manager is not a policeman, so he can't just break into their houses. That's why he looks through his sister's fresh Instagram posts. Can you spot who's hiding the thief? Take a closer look at the second and fourth pictures. Both selfies reveal fragments of male hands, but only this guy is wearing the same ring as the thief. Gotcha! The next day, a group of six friends celebrates their birthday in a restaurant. All except Kyle and Kitty order cherry punch. They drink it and five minutes later get sick. Mary calls doctors and they conclude that someone had poisoned the punch. She suspects Kyle and Kitty, so she asks them just one question. Why did you order other drinks? Kitty replies, I ordered tea because I'm allergic to strawberries. Even one small bite gives me a red rash. And Kyle replies, I'm not proud of it, but I'm really broke. I took coffee just because it's cheaper. Who's lying? Kitty, she said that she was allergic to strawberries, but the guests drank cherry punch. Carl invites Mary on a romantic weekend in the country. They stay in a fancy hotel and go for a walk. When they come back, they see that someone broke into the room and rummaged through their stuff. They question three suspects. Their neighbor says, Sorry, I had a skydiving class. I arrived five minutes ago. The cleaner says, I spent all day cleaning rooms on the fourth floor, so I haven't had time to clean up your room yet. And the lobby boy says, I was dealing with a tourist group from Sweden all day. We had some booking issues. Who's lying? The Cleaner This hotel is a three-story. Carl and Mary go on a boat trip and face a huge storm. They end up on a deserted island. After a while, they get really hungry and go for a walk to find something to eat. There are four options. Cornfield with fresh harvest, a garden with wild sweet potatoes, oranges from this tree, or berries from this bush. Can you help the guys make the safest choice? The boogeyman in the cornfield is moving, and it looks pretty unfriendly. There are sharp thorns on these berry bushes. Creepy spiders are hiding in this orange tree, so they better choose sweet potatoes. Look at the picture carefully and choose an image identical to this example. Well done! Image 4 is identical, but it's rotated by 180 degrees. Detective got a call from the villa of a famous billionaire, Mr. Green, who disappeared this morning after he left home to play golf with his coach. Detective questioned all the witnesses. The housemaid said Mr. Green had breakfast and left at 10 a.m. Mr. Green's girlfriend said she left for a photo shoot early in the morning before he woke up. Mr. Green's personal golf coach said he had spent all day at home. The detective realized that one of the witnesses was lying. Who? The coach was lying. He had an appointment with a client. Anna was visiting her granny in the country. 
Granny decided to cook a special dinner and sent Anna to the forest to collect some mushrooms. Granny gave Anna a picture of specific mushrooms that she had to pick. This was very important because the forest was full of dangerous mushrooms. Help Anna to choose the right mushrooms. Well done! Mushrooms number 3 are perfectly safe. George and Henry met a gorgeous singer, Tara. Both men fell in love at first sight and invited her on a yacht. When all three arrived at the pier, each guy began to claim that he was a millionaire and owner of the yacht. Help Tara to find out which one is a liar. Look closely at the yacht. There is a plaid jacket that matches Henry's pants perfectly. At the same time, the watch at George's hand is cracked and shows 8 a.m., although it's evening time. It's unlikely that a millionaire would wear a broken watch. Mike and Wendy expected the newborn to arrive next week. Mike was painting walls but accidentally pulled his back, fell, and passed out. He woke up in the hospital. Three women were standing in front of his bed. Each claimed that she had been Mike's wife. Help Mike to remember his real wife. The belly of the first woman is too small for a woman who is giving birth next week. The second woman is wearing high heels and her shoes are buttoned. The third woman's sandals are unbuttoned. She couldn't button her shoes on her own because of her belly. Look at the picture attentively. Find the odd kitten. That's right, the second kitten's paw is different from all the others. Tina had five sisters. One night, she woke up in the middle of the night because she heard a loud noise from her sister's bedroom, as if someone had slammed the window. Tina suspected that one of her sisters left a bed after lights out and hurried to check them. Tina inspected all five beds. Each sister seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Help Tina to determine which sister went for a walk after lights out and made so much noise. It was this sister in the third bed. Take a closer look. She crawled under the blanket wearing her dirty sneakers. Diana, her fiancé Tim, sister Sarah, and their puppy came to visit the groom's mother, Miss Wilson, at her house. Next morning, Diana found out that her puppy was gone. Diana questioned oh no. all three family members. Tim was hanging out with his ex-classmates. Sarah demonstrated a small kitty. She spent her time purchasing a new pet. And Miss Wilson tried to stay away from the puppy because of her severe allergy. Who is a liar? Miss Wilson lied about her allergy. She wouldn't have been able to stand next to the kitten. Betty had three daughters. One morning, her neighbor Lauren said she had seen one of Betty's daughters at a nightclub last night, but she wasn't sure which one exactly. Betty didn't allow her daughters to visit nightclubs, so she questioned all of them. Sam spent all night in a library. Gemma on a date with her boyfriend, Alex, but she returned home before midnight. Kelly said she was watching a series all night and didn't leave the house. Who is lying? Sam is lying. Look at her face and clothes. She's covered with glitter. Who needs glitter in a library? An elephant was sleeping and having a very weird dream. When he woke up the next morning, he found out that his shadow was gone. He was looking for his shadow all day and finally met a wizard. The wizard confessed that he had stolen the elephant's shadow. But the wizard was ready to give it back if the elephant managed to recognize it. Help the elephant to make the right choice. Yep, the second shadow fits perfectly. Kelly received an anonymous message that one of her teachers is a vampire. Look at the picture. 
Can you help Kelly to identify the real vampire? It's over here. She has an eye in her meal. There was once a magical forest where 32 mermaids, 43 elves, 26 unicorns, and 57 fairies lived. The forest got cursed, and life there got disrupted. The mermaids started living on dry land, forcing the elves to move out. The elves had to move to the territories of the unicorns. The unicorns started to lose their magic powers and needed fairy dust to sustain themselves. So, fairies had to work overtime and were exhausted. There are four spells. One will make elves disappear. The second will make mermaids move to the territories of unicorns instead of elves. The third one will heal the species, but only those with an even number of creatures. The fourth will turn unicorns into fairies. Which one should you use? You should use the third one. The mermaids and unicorns are the species that need to be healed, and both have an even number of creatures. Mrs. Collins has five daughters, Hello? Hannah, Elle, Eve, Anna, and Ava. What is special about their names? They all have palindromic names, meaning they're the same when you read them from left to right and from right to left. Adam was traveling around the world when he found himself in a little kingdom. He didn't have a map or the internet. He was just wandering around. Ooh. Also, he couldn't read any signs because he didn't know the language. Ooh. Adam walked into a beautiful castle and ran into two girls. It turned out that it was the castle of the royal family, and no one was allowed in there. Ooh. The girls agreed not to report him, but only if he guessed which one of them was the princess. Can you help him? Look at the wall. There's a painting of the queen and her daughter. She looks exactly like the girl on the right. I bet she's the princess. <laughs> Genevieve is a time traveler, and she got to ancient Greece. The girl was so mesmerized by everything that she forgot to be careful and blend in. So, she was captured and taken to the emperor. Huh. He could tell that Genevieve wasn't from his land. So, he started to interrogate her, but didn't believe a single word. Still, he was a nice person, so he gave Genevieve a chance to escape. Yes! There were three young women in front of her. If she guessed which one of them was his daughter, she'd be set free. <sighs> Can you help Genevieve? Look, this girl has the exact same necklace as the emperor. It must be his daughter. <laughs> People invented the time machine, and now there are criminals traveling in time and disrupting time flow. The time police tried to catch the imposters, and they need your help. Look at this picture. Do you see the time traveler? It's this dude here. Look at his fancy modern haircut. Back in that era, people didn't have barber shops. Yeah. Moving on to the Wild West. Do you see the time traveler here? It must be this person, the one wearing modern sneakers. The next stop is ancient Egypt. Take a very close look and find someone who doesn't belong here. What is this girl wearing? A tank top and shorts? No, she's not from here. <laughs> okay, we have to catch some more. For example, here, do you see anything suspicious? I don't think people had cell phones back then. This is the imposter. Okay, another Stone Age image for you. Who doesn't fit in here? This girl looks like a stone ager, but she's reading a book. There were no books back then. Hello. Great. 
there's just one last time traveler to catch, and they're in the Middle Ages. Look closely and tell me who you think it is. This guy is wearing headphones. Yeah, that's him. Oh my god! Mr. Thompson was in his house reading a newspaper when he heard some noise outside. He walked out and saw that someone had crashed into his car. He asked his neighbors what they'd been doing. Scarlett said that she'd been at home playing video games. Charles said that he'd just come back after a walk with his dog. Tessa said that she'd been gardening behind her house. Hmm. Who lied? It must be Tessa. She doesn't have any gardening tools with her. And she isn't dressed properly for gardening. Serena was having a party in her house, and she invited all her classmates. In the middle of the party, the lights went off for a couple of minutes. When the light came back on, Serena realized that her parents' expensive vase, covered in diamonds, had been stolen. Three people seemed suspicious to her. Tatum said, I was in the bathroom. Quinn said, I didn't steal anything. I didn't even know the vase was so expensive. Dean said, when the lights went off, I fell into the pool, and I was pretty busy getting out. Who lied? Dean, for sure. If he had fallen into the pool, he'd be all wet, but his clothes are completely dry. In a little town, someone stole a bucket of chicken wings from a local store. Three customers were the main suspects. Mr. Cook was interrogated at work. Hello. I was in a rush and just got something for lunch. I didn't steal anything. Mm. Mrs. Bailey was at home making breakfast. I only got some fresh vegetables. My family is vegan. What? Dale, a college student, was in the park studying. I got my sandwich and left. I didn't know anything about the theft. Who lied? Mrs. Bailey. She said her family was vegan, but she has cheese and cow milk on the table. Vegans don't eat any of that. In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat candy. No one studies or does anything useful. Mr. Rellum came back home after shopping with her friends all day and asked her daughters what they'd been doing. Hmm. I was eating popcorn and binge watching a TV show, said Hannah. I was playing soccer with my friends, said Elle. I was at the beach with some friends, said Ava. Who lied? It must be Hannah. Look, she hasn't even started her popcorn, and there's also a book under her bed. Elle's soccer team played six matches in the season. They won two, drew two, and lost two. In total, they conceded two goals and scored three. What are the results of all six matches? Every time they lost, they must have conceded at least one goal. They lost two matches and conceded two goals, which means they conceded one goal each time. The scores of these matches must be 0 to 1. We're out of conceded goals, so the scores of the two drawn matches should be 0 to 0. Now, we're only left with three goals and two winning games. So, in one game, they must have won with a score of 1 to 0, and in the other, with a score of 2 to 0. Ava was out partying with her friend all week, so her room is a complete mess now. It's Friday, and she's planning to go on a picnic with her best friend. She needs her bag, her sunglasses, and her cell phone. Can you help her find them? Here they are. Great job. It's Saturday, and Ava still hasn't had time to clean. Now she's heading to her classmate's place for a pool party. She needs her swimsuit, her necklace, and her heels. Can you find them? Yes, they're all here. It was a cold and rainy day. Detective Callum was in his office when he got a call from a hotel's cleaning man. He said he'd found an unconscious woman in one of the rooms. 
Detective Callum arrived immediately. By that time, the woman, whose name was Anna, had already come to her senses. The detective asked if there was someone in the city who could help her. Anna said she had a sister, but the woman didn't know anything about her arrival because Anna wanted to surprise her. The detective called Anna's sister and said, Your sister arrived at the city, but someone attacked her. Please come as soon as possible. As soon as the woman arrived, she was arrested. Why? Anna said that her sister didn't know she was going to visit her. Detective Callum didn't specify where exactly the sister should come, but she still managed to find them. For some reason, she knew where the place was. Autumn is an archaeologist exploring an ancient cave. After a month down there, she found a hidden place with three chests. One of them had gold in it. But if the woman picked the wrong chest, she'd get locked in the cave forever. Uh oh. The note on the first chest said, the gold isn't in chest 2. The second note said, the gold is in chest 1 or 3. And the last one said, the gold isn't here. Which chest should she open? If the gold isn't in the second chest, it must be in the first or the third one. But the note on the third chest claims the gold isn't there so it must be in the first chest. Ben works at a VIP club. His job is to not let any young or suspicious people in. Every day, some visitors with fake IDs try to sneak in, and Ben has to detect which documents are fake. Here are some IDs. Your task is to help Ben decide if people they belong to can enter. Here, look at this one. What will you say? It seems like she was born on the 28th of the 13th month. This ID doesn't look real. Great, another one for you. Should Ben let this guy in? This person is supposed to be 46 years old, but in this photo, he looks like a teenager. I think Ben shouldn't let him in. This is suspicious. What can you say this time, in or out? This ID seems real. I think it's safe to let her in. Another person, another decision. Does anything bother you here? Nope, he seems fine to me. One more to go. Should Ben let her in? Look at her address. Canada, USA? This is weird. I bet it's a fake ID. So I'd say, nope. Mason went to visit his grandma, who lived in a different part of his neighborhood. While he was in her house, his bike got stolen. Mason called the police. He said that he'd seen the bike had been taken by Mr. Jones. It was the neighbor the guy had always been arguing with. Mason and a detective came to visit Mr. Jones. The police officer asked if the man had stolen the bike. Mr. Jones denied doing it, saying he'd just finished painting his fence. The detective believed him. Why? His story seems true. There's fresh paint on the grass by the fence, which proves that Mr. Jones indeed painted it just recently. When Quinn returned home after walking her dog, she found out someone had stolen her favorite bracelet from her room. Oh, no. Her sister, Belle, also liked it. So Quinn went to find her and ask if she had taken the accessory. The girl ran into Belle as she was leaving the bathroom. Belle denied taking the bracelet, saying that she'd been in the shower this whole time. She didn't even have time to enter her sister's room. Quinn sneaked a peek into the bathroom and realized Belle was lying about taking a shower. How did she understand it? If Belle had really taken a shower, the bathroom mirror would be foggy, 
But look, it's absolutely clear. The city's richest lady, Mrs. Anderson, came to watch a football game. She was sitting on the best seat in the first row. In the middle of the game, she noticed that someone had stolen her diamond necklace. Luckily, a detective was sitting right next to her. He started to observe people around. One person became his main suspect. And who do you suspect? Look, there's a guy dressed as a football player with a number 7 on his back. But as you can see, number 7 is playing the game. Someone must have dressed as a player to blend in. Evie was living with her partner. She didn't want to tell her parents about her relationship yet, so she kept it a secret. Once, her mother came from another city to visit Evie. The girl's partner was on a business trip at that time, so she decided to pretend that she lived alone. And still, her mother could tell that Evie was dating someone. How did she figure it out? There are two toothbrushes in the bathroom. One of them is likely to belong to someone else. Alice and Dakota work in the city's animal shelter on the weekends. Alice walks the dog and Dakota feeds the cats. Who does something wrong? Dakota. She gives the cats dog food. Sophie and Ever are having a picnic in the park. Sophie is talking to her brother on the phone, and Ever is eating berries from a bush. Who is not smart? Ever. There is a warning sign saying the berries are poisonous. A family is working in the backyard. Atlas is mowing the lawn, and Cassidy is watering the flowers. Can you tell who is doing something wrong? Atlas. It seems that his lawnmower doesn't work properly because the grass doesn't get cut. 